Hello everyone, welcome to another prepare a recipe with only five ingredients with me video. Today we are going to prepare abacha with only five ingredients. I believe that abacha is the number one Nigerian recipe that uses the most ingredients. It requires the most ingredients. I'll insert a clip here of all the ingredients I use to prepare an abacha recipe that is sitting pretty on my channel right now. Are they not intimidating? Yes, I agree that they're intimidating, but today I'm going to prepare abacha with only five ingredients following our usual rules. If you don't know what this series is all about, in the first video, I did a very long intro talking about what it's all about. Yeah, that's the longest intro on this channel. <laughs> so long that when my husband was watching it, he was like, babe, <laughs> this is quite unlike you. You usually dive into the recipe. Yes, I dive in straight away without saying anything else. <laughs> but for this series, that long intro was absolutely necessary, yeah. If I do something that I don't normally do, it means that it's necessary, yeah? So be patient when I'm doing it. The good thing about today's recipe is that I tried as much as possible to eliminate the very traditional ingredients that are used when preparing abacha, yeah? Because those outside Nigeria often complain, oh, I can't prepare this abacha. It contains a lot of traditional ingredients that I can't buy where I live. With this five ingredient abacha recipe, I promise you that most people outside Nigeria will be able to prepare delicious abacha in the comfort of their own home. Let's go. Let's dive in. Let me show you the ingredients. These are the chosen ones. Yay. Five of them. The first one is red onions with emphasis on red yeah red onions adds color and a special taste to abacha the second one is mackerel i'm going to grill this mackerel it's grilling but it's actually smoking yeah it becomes smoked mackerel when you grill it the way i'm going to grill it in the oven we'll see all that later you can deep fry yours if you wish but I prefer the taste of smoked mackerel. Then you need spinach. Yeah, I can't have abacha that does not contain a green color. Abacha that does not contain a green vegetable is so plain, so unappetizing to me. In Nigeria, what we use is garden egg leaves. This is garden egg. I have it here, but I'm not going to add it today because he didn't make it. <laughs> Yeah, so this is just one variety of the garden eggs we have in Nigeria. This is in the eggplant family, but the difference between this and eggplants is that while you can't eat eggplants raw, this one can be eaten raw. Spinach is a perfect alternative for garden egg leaves when preparing abacha. You won't even notice the difference. 10 out of 10 alternative spinach, leafy spinach. Normally, I would buy <laughs> baby spinach, but uh, when I went to buy these, I couldn't find baby spinach and I said that today my village people will not stop the making of this video because I'm already behind schedule. <laughs> then you need red palm oil. Can you see the name? The last time I showed this oil, people were asking me the name. The name is right there on the label, Nigeria Tasty Palm Oil. Even though it's in Ghana, they call it Nigeria Tasty. I don't know why. <laughs> Anyway, maybe it's a Nigeria that owns the company <laughs> in Ghana. And this one is edible potash. Yeah, it makes palm oil cordo. This edible potash, I really had to put it in here. Anyway, you're not seeing me. Let me. I want you to be looking at me while I talk about this edible potash. So this edible potash, yes, they say that it is bad for you. <laughs> but I still eat it anyway. <laughs> Because there's this traditional taste that it adds to some meals that I cannot do without. We all know that some things are bad for us, yet we eat them. Yeah, in small quantities, of course. You don't have to use it. You can use baking soda. Um, this is baking soda. Bicarbonate of soda. And if you don't want to use these two, I have a video on my channel where I showed how to make palm oil cuddle with only hot water and uh, a mixer or a blender the centrifugal force will 
make the palm oil cuddle when you add hot water and here is the main ingredient if you watched the first video you'll understand why the main ingredient is set aside here the abacha you can make abacha with cassava if you can buy cassava where you live i have a detailed video about how to make abacha i believe there's still enough sun for you to make abacha now yeah <laughs> and then we have salt here moving on the first thing we'll do is to smoke the mackerel in the oven let's go this mackerel has been cleaned for me at the supermarket you see they gutted it cleaned it i rinsed it and now all i have to do is add salt and then pin it up i have a detailed video <laughs> i don't know how long ago i uploaded that video man it's up to five years i guess <laughs> this is my channel Achoba Apple is on my channel whatever you think of whatever you're looking for about nigerian prep you'll find it on this channel you just need to pay attention when watching the video some of them have whole videos dedicated to them like this video of making smoked mackerel it has a whole video dedicated to them but some of these tips and tricks are hidden inside my videos they are hidden inside my videos the people that benefit most from my videos are people that sit back relax and watch these videos like nollywood videos those are the people that benefit most on this channel but if you're the type that is so impatient always telling me that i talk too much always uh, telling me the video is too long always complaining in fact if you're always complaining it means that you already know how to cook so what are you doing on this channel what in the world are you doing on a cooking channel if you feel that uh, i am being patronizing or i am uh, explaining too much come on the target audience on this channel are people that do not know how to cook if you want a one minute video that will teach you just the things you don't know already then you need to go and pay someone not me because i don't have the time for private lessons you need to go and pay someone and they will teach you one-on-one -on -one. yeah and then you tell them i already know this i already know that don't bother telling me that that's the way to do it so this is done you see how beautiful it is it's done in circles that's how they do it in nigeria and this folding uh, gives it a nice texture as well like when you lay it flat and uh, grill it in the oven the mackerel is so soft when it comes out but this one because it's bent like this as it's grilling the water is going out of it because it's under pressure or I don't know how to say like if you touch it, it it's taut so this is why it's done a lot of people will see me do this I don't understand why it's done like this this is why it's done when you're grilling it the water will be going out giving it that special texture of Nigerian smoked mackerel the smoked mackerels you buy outside Nigeria like in the US it's too soft Ugh, I can't stand it so that's why it's done this way. This is how I rig up my oven tray. Put this one on top. So that one is full. And the liquid is coming out. To be falling in there and then place this one like that and put it in the oven i cover it with the foil then i put it in the oven i use a combination of baking and grilling to get it to perfect doneness please check out that video i talked about all the details you need are in there pour a small quantity of water into the edible potash 
stir it and set aside. For the abacha, I soak with cool water. Some people use warm water, but be careful not to leave it in the water for too long. You have to be careful not to let it soak too much. You don't want it to revert to <laughs> how it was before it was dried. And still hear the crunchy sound, yeah? As soon as you can't hear it anymore, it's still hard. Remove it. From the water. You see? It's still hard to touch, but it's no longer crunchy. So you leave it like that for a while. Some of the water that are still on it, it will absorb all that water and then it will be perfect for mixing. While the fish is getting smoked over there, we prepare the rest of the ingredients. Can you see me? Can you, can you, can you, can you? If I don't have red onions in my abacha, no, I don't think, I don't think I can eat that abacha. <laughs> if I have all these ingredients here, if I don't have them, because that's why I chose them, I don't have them in abacha. There are lots of other ingredients that if I don't have in abacha, I can't eat it. They're not here because, you know, <laughs> we are using the best five, but Onions. Oh, come to think of it, you know all those people that hawk African salad, especially the the Onisha African salad. Hi, who grew up in Onisha here? Be good. Hi. Oh, 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 I didn't grow up in Onisha, but I spent a fair amount of time in Onisha. Eh? So those Ami Ami Barracks girls that used to hawk abacha. Eh? <laughs> They don't even prepare this abacha with a lot of ingredients, eh? Just cuddle palm oil, opaka, green veggies, abacha, ah. and then fried fish, odwaz. Ah. But I think they add uh, white magic to that day abacha because Sometimes the kind of taste the tail has, eh? <laughs> I strongly believe that they add white maggi to it. There's this kind of, uh, there's this kind of sweetness that it has. Oof. This one is I cut it in rings for decorating it. So set that aside. And I chop these ones. Just chop it, chop it. <laughs> cut it, kelly, 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 kelly. <laughs> as quickly as you can the quantity you add depends on you the quantities of in these ingredients that i'm adding depends on you by strict i mean the number of ingredients not the quantities of ingredients add every ingredient that you choose to your taste it should be a no-brainer shouldn't it <laughs> hey there's some people are not giving me a hard time even when there's no hard time to be given is it that my English is not simple enough? <laughs> Even with all my robotic accent, you still can't. I'm not speaking for them for you here, am I? <laughs> Madre mia, YouTube 
life. Is this enough? What do you think? Should I add more? Should I? Should I? <laughs> yeah, you don't want it too much. I mean, whenever I'm adding any ingredient to what I'm cooking, I don't want that ingredient to overpower every other thing. Yeah, you don't want to be eating this and you'll be tasting only onions, onions, no. I know my daughter will ask for more onions or I mean, you have this one, whoever wants more onions can take more as garnish and put on top and eat. But if you add too much onions, it will just overpower the rest of the ingredients. You can't taste any other thing. It's not good for any meal at all. It's just like adding too much salt to a meal. It will just destroy the delicious meal you prepared. I also need to chop this one, some of it, into tiny pieces. Like I said, with every ingredient, you add the quantity that is a good fit for the quantity of abacha you're making. For instance, this spinach now, I can't even tell you this is the quantity you add. I can't even, I don't even know what quantity I'll add. I'll just slice this and when I'm mixing, you see how I do it. I'll add and uh, mix add mix and once i see the distribution of the green color that i like you don't want it to be vegetables all everywhere so i'll be adding stirring even when i'm cooking soup because you know when i do all these fast 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 videos it doesn't show everything that's why from time to time i have to do this cook with me video so that i can carry everyone along those who really want to learn yeah you know those who genuinely want to learn i know there are a lot of them on my channel from the questions i get so sometimes it's necessary to do these cook with me videos where i slow it down and bring you into my kitchen so uh, nobody knows the, like you think oh this person knows how to cook they know the perfect no when I want to buy vegetables, I buy even more. When I'm cooking up till tomorrow, I don't want to put that uh, information in my brain. I like to leave the processing part of my brain free to do really tedious thinking. Yeah, that's why when you fill your brain with a lot of unnecessary stuff, you can't reason very well anymore because you've jump packed. It's just like a computer. If you understand how a computer works, you have a lot of files in your, on your computer. The, the fetching and the delivery and processing will be slowed down. There's a lot of information I don't bother putting in my head. It's not necessary. Because why would I memorize the quantity of vegetable that I need to prepare this abacha? When tomorrow, the quantity of abacha that I'll prepare will change. So why bother memorizing it? <laughs> so I cannot tell you, add eight leaves. <laughs> it's impossible. It's even funny as I'm talking about it. So just have enough vegetables and when you're cooking add a little stir it does it look good yes stop adding does it look like it needs more yes add a little bit more stir it i mean no need to store that kind of information in your head even if you you sliced too much or you chopped too much you can just take you know how you add this one by the side when you're serving it, you'll see it you can just take this excess one and put it by the side instead of packing it into the meal and it will not look good or not everyone will like it so you can leave it, it won't go to waste if you're preparing fried eggs the next day you can add it i mean these things they never go to waste make sure you have enough even more than enough you chop more than enough if it's too much you use it for other things you cook every day in your home don't you <laughs> so don't stress yourself I'm a stress free woman uh, some of these exact quantities of ingredients i find it so stressful i don't know i find them so stressful you don't need to Pack all these exact quantities of ingredients in your head. No. Oh. Look and feel and taste. And then you master the cooking for your family. I mean, for your family. I mean, I can say, comfortably say that I've mastered cooking for my family. Yeah. Some people eat a lot of seasoning. For instance, the quantity of seasoning cubes that people add to their meals. When they go elsewhere and the person adds a small quantity of seasoning cubes, they, they will feel that the soup is not delicious or the food is not delicious. But it's just that they, their taste buds are used to too many seasonings going on. For instance, someone commented on the first video telling me that, oh, that uh, she used to add so many ingredients to her jollof rice and then 
he still didn't give her the taste she thought it was maybe one ingredient missing or the other and then she'll add more keep adding more to you know in the search for the classic taste but then i shared that five ingredient jollof rice and encouraged people to try it she tried it and she she said that it gave her the classic taste because i tell you sometimes less is more the amount of seasoning i see people add to the meal uh, i'll be like what how can you taste the meal? This is seasoning, Yarumaka. You're, you're only eating seasoning. Yeah, so I, I can't. And such people, when they come to your house or when they go to, they say, oh, this person doesn't know how to cook. But that's because they've trained their taste buds to expect a, a certain amount of seasoning, like seasoning overload. Uh, no. I, 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 my, my mom wasn't big on seasoning. My husband and his family, they were big on seasoning. They were big on salt, but when we got married, I slowly weaned him. <laughs> yeah, it's weaning because you can actually wean yourself of eating a lot of salt, a lot of seasoning. You can wean yourself, wean, like how you wean a baby of uh, breast milk or something like that. So you slowly but surely reduce the quantity of salt that the person eats or the quantity of seasoning you use in your meals and with time your taste buds i mean you own your taste buds that's one thing we forget all the time you own your taste buds you can retrain and untrain and yeah do anything you want with your taste you're the one you're the boss <laughs> so don't let your taste buds control you you can win yourself off of those if you look at my cupboard the only seasonings you see are seasoning cubes, thyme, black pepper, uh, what else? Ehu for traditional ingredients. That reminds me, Ehu should have been in this. Oh, I miss my Ehu in Abacha. Ehu gives Abacha such a unique flavor. But you know, I have to be strict on the five ingredients. When I say five, five, Ehu had to go. And of course, because Ehu is quite traditional, not everybody can buy it where they live outside Nigeria so it's important that I drop a hook from the list so that everyone will be able to prepare this abacha. So yeah as I was saying in my cupboard it, it, you, you don't see a lot of seasonings. Yeah I don't add you see me you watch my videos that's the way I cook. When I'm boiling chicken, thyme, onions and seasoning cubes. That's it. Chicken has its own natural flavor. You don't want to ruin that natural flavor. As long as you're using the hard chicken, which is hen or old layers, yeah. It has its own natural flavor. You don't want to ruin it with all these things that sell in the market. Uh, mixed chicken, chicken seasoning. Why would I add? You know this chicken seasoning? They use chicken flavor to make it and then they add more artificial flavor. Which artificial flavor will be much better than the real thing fresh eh? <laughs> you're ruining the fresh one let the fresh one shine through by reducing the quantities of artificial ingredients you add to your, your meals this is it already like i said please check out that video yeah details there very short video see that all we need to do now is break some of it into tiny pieces that will mix with the abacha and then break the other into large pieces this fish is quite small <laughs> hey, mackerel is not in season here in, in Spain or at least in the part of Spain where I live mackerel comes and goes in season so at this time of the year it's not in season so you can only buy these baby like ones from the supermarkets and fish markets but when it's in season you can buy much bigger ones this one is the baby <laughs> you only see the babies okay so you debone it and break it into small pieces like here I break it into Tiny pieces, as tiny as you can go. Just like you did with the onions, eh? Break it into small pieces. When you mix it with the abacha, <laughs> to taste like crayfish. Like when you're chewing the whole thing and it's mixing in your mouth. Oh! You'll be in heaven. Oh!
again the quantity you break into tiny pieces is up to you but you know don't go overboard with it you don't want this to be tasting as was <laughs> instead of abacha abacha you don't want the as to overpower even the main ingredients so use your discretion as i'm doing that i'm looking at the abacha This is what it looks like, the tiny ones, and then this one, I removed the head anyway because there's nothing left in the head. Who do I do honey see as? Hey, there's no gain in fish head. <laughs> That fish head you people are fighting for. There's no gain there, so stop it. <laughs> These ones, I'm going to leave them like that. That's what I'm going to use to serve it. Okay, everything is ready. Look at how the abacha is. You see? It's not so soaking wet i don't know how to explain it you can't hear any crunchy sound but it's kind of dry i don't know how to explain it it's not so over soaked so i'll leave that there add palm oil if your palm oil is congealed you melt it a little bit over the stove just melting don't this one is okay. Again, as much as you want. But it's good that you add enough palm oil to that will coat the abacha very well. You don't want the abacha dry. And that's the edible potage that I mixed earlier. Stir it and leave it to settle a little bit. You don't want the sediment in there and slowly decant the solution to that then see that change from red to yellow and thicken see the science of cooking nigerian food you see what i mean by cuddled palm oil cuddle i don't know if it's the right expression for it but that's what i call it cuddled palm oil see it's like cuddled next you add all the clickly ingredients If you are using crayfish, that's when you also add these things. See the clickly fish. You add that. And then you mix. This palm oil that is so congealed, when you heat it up, it's going to melt and spread a bit more. Ooh, I can smell it too. I can smell it and that smell is coming from the edible potash Ooh, that is the smell and when I taste it you can also taste it that's the smell and taste I did not want to miss by dropping that special ingredient <laughs> you see that one is even enough for all this can see that the 
green veggies they're quite scanty in this so i can afford to add more so at this time there's no rush i can slice a bit more i can chop a bit more and add As you like it everything is as you like it I know that there's a way to prepare meals that is pleasing to a lot of people yeah of course when you're preparing for other people make it that way See, have a little more green in there but it's not overwhelming that's what you want Taste it before I add salt. <laughs> of course, it doesn't have any taste because I mean that kind of salt taste because you don't have crayfish here, you don't have a who here, you don't have all those, so you don't have seasoning cubes, you don't have ogiri, all those things that contain a little bit of salt or salty taste. As much salt as it takes to get it tasting the way that is pleasing to your own taste buds. I taste a tiny bit more. <laughs> That's not tiny, but yeah. That's how I do. In the last video, Someone asked about quantity of salt and another person responded with a comment that made me laugh like that's real rolling on the floor laughing and that's true. So the person was saying, keep adding and when your ancestors whisper that you should stop, you stop. <laughs> but that's exactly what happens when you're adding salt. Your ancestors will be telling you to stop adding but your village people will be telling you to keep adding. <laughs> so you have to know which voice you listen to if you listen to your village people you end up with over salted food mm -hmm. that's perfect now and this time it's ready to be served with the onions with the fish and some vegetables some more vegetables by the side it's okay to be served like this but if you want to warm it up you take it over to the stove I like to do that on high heat while I stir all the time so that it will heat up quickly. You don't want it sitting there for too long. This one is so quick. Not a lot of ingredients to prepare. Can you hear the first? sound of it warming up as soon as i see the first thing can you see that that's done for me it's fine with me because i don't want the onions to lose the crunch yeah do that for too long you see it's done Fish. Just tell me who you will give this and they will not be happy and your heart will not be Paulina Paulina eh? <laughs> Look at that Look at that With five ingredients At least it looks good Let's go and taste Come and eat You guys said that I didn't offer you the last time I don't want to break P.T. Doche's rule <laughs> He said that anybody that offers somebody food on the internet and says, come and eat, the person is wicked. I, I am not wicked, am I? <laughs> so, 
come and eat. like this you people think that it's because it's me that cooked it it's not because of that I'm dancing at the surprise of this thing being delicious because I've never tried all these five ingredient recipes this is the first time I'm trying it it's just a conceived idea I chose the ingredients in my head. Okay, this will come, this will go, this has to come, this will go. I've never prepared it. I've always prepared these recipes with the full ingredients that we use to prepare them in Nigeria. But all these questions, all these doubts, all these worries, you know, got me into my lab. to my chemistry lab, my food chemistry lab. <laughs> the only thing missing here is pepper. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, the onions has a stink of onions, not of pepper. So the only thing I would say is missing here is pepper. But I can't do six ingredients. It must be five. So I'm going to manage it like that. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. 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 And you wash it down with small odeco. <laughs> but I'm not going to drink that now. Actually, we're going to use this abacha for evening snack. So then I'll settle down and enjoy my stout with it. <laughs> now it's too early to drink. <laughs> mm. 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 Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. There's another way to eat this. You can get the you can get the beef dish a little bit of abacha into it like that. Then food. Mm. 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 Oh, madre mia. Food heaven. Mm. You can call this one abacha taco. Tacolicious abacha. Oh, oh you? This is how we used to eat it in my grandma's place. You know my grandma now. Mm. Mm. We use that in egg leaves and wrap it up like this. Mm. We'll be enjoying. We used to look forward to long vax. In the villa. Anyway, prepare yours and send me feedback. I've been receiving a lot of feedback. I can't even keep up with sharing them about the five ingredient jollof rice. This one, I beg you to try it. You can add pepper if you wish. Yeah, just for completeness. Bye bye. See you soon.